Welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, apologies for the iffy voice, battling a bit of a chest infection in a minute, but the show must go on. Today, I want to talk to you about uh, a new series that I'm bringing to the channel, and that's the Trackman Data Series. The inspiration for me to bring this series to you is I think that data is something that people fear uh, for a few reasons, lack of understanding, of course, um, no fault of anyone's. Uh, if you don't know what the data means and you don't know how to influence it, then why would you want to get involved in it? So uh, I hope to bring you all of the various components that TrackMan measures. Um, and to give you an understanding of what influences those components. I'm just going to bring my microphone up a little higher there. If you understand what influences those components and you know what the component does to your golf ball, then you'll feel a bit more in control, if I can use that word, because control is a, is a, is a word when you link it to the golf swing, I think it, it makes everyone feel like they want to hunker down and grab the golf club tight, but in control in terms of what you can do to influence the ball flight. Trapman measures many, many variables, more over 20 variables, and I want to talk about every single one of them. One of them. Now, whenever you work with Trapman, and I work with it for seven hours a day, six, seven hours a day, every day, and you get to, um, I, I could stand behind someone hit a golf shot and I could tell you the Trapman data without doubt, uh, whether I'm standing down the line more than, than face on, but, but without doubt, you work with it enough times, you can definitely start to see more than you think you see. It's a fascinating journey when you're a coach and you start working with Trapman. People have said at the start, it brings up more questions than answers. I would probably agree with that to a degree but I think if if you're thinking in three dimensions and you are understanding the geometry and physics of this golf club and this body um, it, it becomes very intuitive when you use Trapman. Today we're talking about face to path now every single session that I do with Trapman I'll only ever have four boxes up that's always attack angle it's club path face angle and face to path if you're using those four boxes with anyone and you're do, running it alongside a pressure mat, uh, video analysis, you're, you're going to have by far enough information. All of the other ingredients, as far as I'm concerned, whilst you're working with video analysis and body track or any other pressure mat, you will be able to uh, understand how the player's moving and how he's working the club through strike. You simply can't teach with just track man numbers alone. You just can't. Um, people talked about it years ago, but it's such a narrow, narrow direction. I don't think that really happens anyway. Face the path, for my money, and I thought about this when I was coming into doing this series, it's going to be a longer video today, so hopefully you don't mind me wittering on because I think it's a nice precursor of what this journey is going to look like with the Trapman data series. The face to path value is ultimately the, the king of all of the data points. If you simply had face to path up on your screen and you started to have the opportunity to change that value, you'd see a different shape in the sky, either left to right or right to left. You'd change the energy on the golf ball, you'd change the height on the golf ball, you'd change the distance on the golf ball, you'd change the spin on the golf ball. That's quite a lot from one data point. And I think when you're starting to understand the titans of the Trapman ingredients, you understand which data points you need to focus on more heavily, you'll understand that there's a hierarchy within the data uh, points system in Trackman. And, I, and, I, I, uh, and I'm not a golf perv out there, but I, I, haven't, I haven't trawled the, the uh, internet for 
how people are using their TrackMan, but this is how I see it, that there's a hierarchy of data points, and these four are, are top of the tree. All of the other ingredients uh, will very much reflect how you're using those data points in conjunction with how you're moving yourself. So everything that I help people with, with their golf game, is uh, an amalgamation of how we move biomechanically and how the club and the ball interact. And if you can get synergy between how we move and the physics of the lever system and the golf ball, you will be super efficient, super powerful, and very consistent. So much so that I, you know, if you follow me on Instagram, which I think I've got more followers on, subscribers on YouTube now than I have on Instagram, I, I hit some shots left-handed. And the reason why I can hit shots left-handed with a reasonable amount of ability is because I apply the same formulas of how I want to move and how I understand the golf game right-handed as I do left-handed. And so you should be able to hit good golf shots left-handed, without doubt. And I think that backs that up. Anyway, that's a lot of waffle. Let's talk about face to path. Face to path is the only box I've got up on the screen. Face to path is not a measurement related to the target. It is the relationship of, as it says, the face orientation to the path line. If I had a path dead straight at the target and Trap Man is lined up to this white line down the middle here, Trap Man relates everything to that white line. When I strike the golf ball, it will think that the white line is my target. That's why I have a, a white ball at the bottom of it so I can line the Trap Man with, up with it. You've got the box here where I put the ball in, that's the eye of the trap man. When I strike the golf ball, it's, this face to path value is just simply giving me an orientation of, even if my path was outside in, and my face was closed to that path, I'd have a negative value. If my path was straight and my face was closed to that path, I'd have a ne negative value. And if I had my path inside out and I had my face closed to that path, I'd have a negative value. Therefore, it doesn't matter where the path is pointing, it doesn't matter where the face is pointing relative to the target, it's simply measuring where the face is pointing relative to the path. I think that's really important. This, has no, this value has no reference to the target. That's a biggie. The majority, the, the, the attack angle doesn't have a re relationship to the target. The only two that have a relationship to the target is the club face and the face angle, which obviously I will be covering. But this face to path value is just simply the face to the path. I'm gonna hit a couple of shots here, and I'm gonna first of all make the face to path value positive. I'm just gonna swing the golf club. Not feeling the strongest. Face to path value has come out with a positive value, 7.3. I'm gonna to aim to the left. I'm gonna make the face to path value positive. The ball should bend to the right. You can see the face to path value is still positive. I'm gonna to aim to the right. I'm gonna open the club face up. Hopefully it'll get that one. No, it didn't get that one, a bit too far to the right. The aim to the right, open, open the face to the path, ball will bend away to the right. So you can see I aim straight, I aim left, I aim right. I just made a consistent face to path value. Anything positive means the ball is going to shape right. Anything negative means the, go the golf ball is going to bend left. So now the golf ball is going to bend to the left, the face to path value. Ooh. That wasn't very good, was it? It was negative, but it's less than I wanted it to be. So, let's try that one again. So, face to path value is now negative 6.8. Again, I aim straight there. I'm now gonna aim to the right. I'm now gonna make a negative face, face to path value. Now bend to the left. Oh, goodness me. Sometimes if you aim too far out to the right or to the left, 
trap man won't see it. <coughs> so there's a negative face to path value and then I'm going to aim to the left. And then, I don't know if that's going to be the best negative face to path value. Yeah, okay. So I've, again, with the face to path value, I've aimed right, I've aimed left. And in the three fades, I aimed uh, left, straight and right, but consistently delivered an open face to path. And I did the same on the closed face to path, I aimed straight, uh, the right and left, and made the ball bend to the left. Face to path value is just giving you an idea of whether you're going to see a ball bend left or a ball bend right. Every golfer, if you see bend in the sky, and, and this is a difference between pushes and pulls, if you see the ball bend in the sky, you know your face is either looking left of your path or right of your path. When you see physical bend, that's when good things happen. So if you're a hooker of the golf ball, if you can make your ball bend the other way, not push the other way, i.e., and we were talking about right-handed golfers here, if you see your ball bend left or hook left, the only thing you need to do as a golfer is make your face open to that path and your golf swing will start to heal itself. It's that simple. So when you practice and you hook over the golf ball and you might turn up and you, you'd see sort of this sort of, sort of thing go on, someone that can't get the ball in the air, got loads of bend to the left, as a hooker of the golf ball, all you need to do is make your golf ball have more fade on it. So there's the hook. I just want to get that value up. Oh, it's having a moment this morning, trap man. Doesn't obviously like my, uh, doesn't like my uh, chest infection. So we've got a big eight degrees of close face to path there. As a hooker of the golf ball, the only thing you need to do is make your face to path value more positive. Because as soon as you hook the golf ball, the path line will be aggressively inside out because you're fending off the left side of the golf course. The only thing you need to do as a golfer is be able to change your face to path value and make your face more open to the path. Because what will happen is the face to the path relationship will change your path lines and your alignments, etc., etc. So the face to path value is something you need to take control of. How do we take control of the face to path, you ask? I'm going to give you the biggest influences on the face to path. Absolutely top of the pile. And sorry, before I go on, what I wanted to say is if you hit the ball left, but it's straight left, it's not a negative face to path value. It would show up as zero. So if I hit a flat pull and I hit it over there, you can see how neutral the face to path is. If I hit a straight push, the face to path value would be fairly neutral. So I can have a very, very straight face to path value, i.e. as close to zero as possible. If you're seeing the ball pull left or push right, you need to make your face to path value either look more left or look more right. You need to see bend in the sky for, for people to start to change the pattern of their golf swing because a pull could be an open face but that's another story the point is is that we're looking for you to understand that as soon as we start to see two three four five six face to path value you'll start to have good uh, reactions within your golf swing what I was about to say was talk about what influences the face to path <coughs> well, excuse me top of the pile of what changes the face to path is your grip. If someone is a 
uh, and this is a, a, an approach that makes you everlasting uh, in your change. If, you're, if you are a positive face to path value guy, it is extremely unlikely that you have a strong grip. Extremely unlikely. Without having another ingredient highlight why you might be fading it. So if you took a hundred golfers and they all came with a positive face to path, 85% of them would probably have some form of open face during their swing caused by a grip. So look at your grip first. If you're a negative face to pather, look at your grip. You might be too strong. You might be too strong in the right hand, you might be too strong in the left hand, you might be too strong in both hands. Go back and check my grip series out. If you're a positive face to pather, you might be weak in the left hand, you might be weak in the right hand, you might be weak in both hands, that's causing that face to open up. So check your grip. As soon as you don't see bend in the direction that you want it, always, 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 always check your hold first. Don't mess around elsewhere. Check your hold. So that's the first one. The second one uh, that affects the face to path is the direction the handle is travelling in through strike. The more that we push the handle out to the right, the more it'll open the face up. The more I move the handle to the left, the more it'll close the face down. So the grip, first of all, the handle trap is second. The third is angle of attack, how much you hit down. If you have a ball back in your stance and you're someone that hits a long way down on the golf ball, it'll tend to open the face up, which will open up the face to path. If the ball is a long way forwards, it will tend to make your attack angle light. The club head will swing past the golf ball. Ball's up here, swing past the golf ball. It will make the face point to the left. So depending on where the, club face, uh, where the club face meets the golf ball in your golf swing, whether it's early in your strike or late in your strike, early in your strike you'll hit more down and tend to have a positive face to path. If the ball is late in your uh, stance, you'll tend to hit up on it and it'll tend to go more left. Again, that'll depend it from the grip. The grip will influence where you tend to put the ball, which will tend to influence where you push the handle and all of these ripple effects that go through. So if you were to, to work on the very first one, on the grip and the face to path, I promise you, you'd start to see some very different reactions in your golf swing. Therefore, face to path is an absolute biggie. You must get yourself on a trap man or, or, or look at the ball in the sky and as soon as you see bend to the left or to the right, you know your face to path value has come back either negative or positive. Hopefully that's given you some insight into how much of an influencer the face to path value is. This is gonna come at you reasonably regularly now, these, the, the, the Trapman data series, because I think when you understand how useful a Trapman or GC quad is, in making you understand what the club and the ball is doing as it interacts with itself, it will then start to make you appreciate all of the variables in how we move will influence whether you find the target reliably or not with your golf ball. If you've got any questions on face to path or any of the data points that I talk about going forwards, feel free to uh, comment on the box below. I think you'll agree, that's good coaching. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.